Hey, Jeff Luff here with Alternative Heating and Supplies. I'm excited to talk to you today about the tube and shell heat exchanger that are mounted on the side of the domestic hot water tanks. The reason why is we get a lot of phone calls of people who have purchased other sidearms from other companies and even our own company and they don't have it working properly. The reason why is that the sidearm heat exchanger is actually very easy to install, but a lot of people make simple mistakes which make it not work very well or at all. So the, the most common way to install them is you're going to need to mount them on the side of the domestic hot water tank. The way they work is that they're going to heat up the water inside the domestic hot water tank. The coldest water is going to drop to the bottom, which is going to pour into the bottom of the sidearm heat exchanger as the water from the outside boiler comes into the uh, tube and shell. It's going to heat up the domestic water and as water heats up it rises. So the domestic hot water is going to rise up and then go straight into the tank and then the coldest water in the tank is going to drop to the bottom and it's going to be heated up again and this convection system will go on and on to keep the tank up to a reasonable temperature where everybody's happy. You're not running a pump, you're not doing anything, just the convection of the hot water coming in from the boiler and the natural convection of the domestic hot water tank is going to give you all the hot water you'll ever need. Where the problem comes is that most people who have the problems, they will not install the sidearm heat exchanger. As you can see here at the bottom, the water comes out of the tank and drops. That's what cold water does. The coldest water drops. But as it heats up, it rises. And where the mistake is usually done is right here. Most of the people will actually bring it up, bring it over, and then drop it back into the tank here. The problem is how water rises. It doesn't drop you just created a thermal block. When you create a thermal block, the only way that hot water will drop is when it cools off and the water will cool off. That means you're not gonna get a convection system. The water has to go back straight, but it cannot drop. When you do that, that's called a thermal block. You can't have that. So you need to install this way. A lot of people have a problem where they don't have these side ports on the side of their tanks. But most of the tanks that are purchased today they always have a pressure relief valve and they also have a drain at the very bottom which is a, you can see at the bottom underneath this one. This tank does have the hot and cold inserts on the side. So if you didn't have these two ports that I have mounted to, you can pull off the drain, put it in like you see here, and then take the pressure relief valve, tee it off, put a tee here, put the pressure relief off one side and the, and the top of the side arm goes in the other side because it's still going to be flat and the water will rise and go in there. So that's the best way to install this tube and shell heat exchanger. And if it's done like this, you will have no problems. The convection system will work beautifully. Now, if you don't have these ports, the pressure relief port or the, uh, the, the drain at the bottom, which you always have a drain, but sometimes the pressure reliefs are done on the back side or on top. Okay, if you have this, then we're going to recommend you go to this plate exchanger, which is another easy install, actually a little bit more simplified, and that works on a thermal pressure siphon, which I'll go on to explain deeper in the next video that I have, and it's called plate exchangers for domestic hot water tanks. When installing the tube and shell heat exchanger, you can use a couple different materials. One, you can use PEX, which is seen here, but you can use it here. PEX is not recommended because once PEX heats up, it gets kind of flexible and it's not going to hold up very well. The, it'll look sloppy. In this case, I use a lead-free brass. Um, it's what I carry and it's easily and readily available for me. So that's what I have done here. And uh, you can see that the install came out just fine. The other option is a good grade copper. The copper you can solder, thread, and uh, dope if you'd like. What I do when I'm doing this, you gotta remember that this tank is under a lot of pressure. So when you're especially doing the domestic hot water side, I re recommend that you use unions. So if there's ever a leak or any kind of a adjustment or anything else you do, you can take it on and off pretty simply. And when I also do this, I use, make sure you're using Teflon and a uh, domestic hot water rated tef Teflon and dope because you don't want to have dope that is not good because that's going to end up in your drinking water or the water you bathe with and a very small amount. But again, make sure it's used for potable water. That pretty much does the tube and shell heat exchanger. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave a comment on the YouTube video that you see below. We'd love to have your inputs. We'd love to hear your suggestions. And please, if you like it, put a thumbs up and please go to our Facebook page, which is identified above me here, and tell us what you think. We'd love to hear inputs of what you would like us to see on new videos, what you need help with, and any solutions or problems that we can help you address. We'd love to try to help you. Keep the questions coming, and we're glad to be here. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.